So I have a lot to say, a lot. I can assure you this today's live probably won't make me very friend, make me very many friends from other communities, but that's okay. I I don't even know where to begin, so I'm going to start with the obvious. So Jose Roman um, died. Allegedly, nobody knows how he died, but someone in my Patreon had posted Justice for All's live, and I listened to about. 20 minutes of it. My blood started boiling to the point that I wasn't even going to go live. I'm working on the website all day. I haven't even touched Donnie Depp all day. But I had to. There were so many things he said that pissed me off that truth needs to be put out there instead of this unfactual bullshit. And I call it bullshit. You'll understand after I go through all the points that I have. So if you're not sure who, um, who Roman is, if you're not sure who Jose was, then Jose is someone that was in Summer Wells. He stayed with the Wells for a little while. Now, if you need me to reiterate who he was, I will. He's one of the people that went down to Tennessee with Andrew, Allie's ex-husband, Hunter's dad, and like two families to get a house that they never got, supposedly, allegedly. Jose stayed behind with them. I had called out, I think I was the first one to call out that I believed it was a drug deal. And people blew me off like I was crazy. Then more people started thinking about it and started talking about it. Maybe it was a drug deal. And then that, my theory got elaborated and people started talking. Again, just call me Rodney. Rodney Dangerfield. So when I had called Andrew out, like, look, this had to be a drug deal. Because there's no other explanation for it at all. No, there's no reason why families would drive all the way down there on a Penske to get a house that they didn't even know they were going to get or not. Put the Penske in a storage unit for a couple of hours and then drive all the way back with kids, no less. Yeah, that doesn't happen. So Jose, for some reason, stayed behind. I personally think, and I've always said this, that Jose stayed behind because he was afraid of the drugs that were being transferred and he didn't want to go back to jail. That is what I always said. I stick with that story. Nothing is going to change my mind on that. I'm pretty convinced of that. So then, now we know who Jose is. Jose was quiet for a very long time. What we learned about Jose through Justice for All is that Jose, I believe, was a child predator. If I'm not mistaken, um, don't quote me on that. But I remember something, and he wasn't allowed to see his own children, and... His kids are now adults, and he couldn't see his own grandchildren. I don't remember exactly, specifically the details, but it was something along those lines. And he wasn't allowed to see any of his grandkids. So, oh yeah, I got blocked all the time. See, Nikki, I disagree with that. I thought he was overly dishonest. Because everything that Jose said, you had other people like Ali and all these other people that knew Summer much better say none of that would have taken place. Like... Jose, to me, was offering information that I wouldn't say nobody cared about, but he was offering information that he couldn't back up. Everyone had everyone that knew Summer had kind of a different story about who she was and what she was about, and including if you believe nobody, you kind of have to believe, I forgot her name, the Bible teacher, the one from the church, who really spoke a lot about Summer's personality, and it was completely different than the kid that Jose was talking about. So I am one of the people on the opposite side that never believed Jose. I always thought Jose was full of shit. And I always wondered, did he have some involvement? Now, everybody that is connected to this case has been caught lying. So we don't know who to believe, who not to believe, who's telling the truth, who's lying. We have no clue anymore. Like, we really don't. 